In this video, I go through nine of the most pervasive, outdated myths about autism that I still see every day. You may have heard of a few of them before, but some may be a surprise to you. Hi everyone, Paul Mikulev here from Autism From The Inside. I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism, so make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. Most of the ideas about autism that we pick up from society are from the 1900s and horribly outdated. Rain Man, for example, was released in 1989. That's 33 years ago. Unsurprisingly, we've come a long way in our understanding of autism since then, especially in recent years, and due in no small part to the contributions of autistic adults sharing their insight and perspective. As early as the 1980s, Temple Grandin was already starting to dispel some of these myths, and since then, many others have joined her in telling their story. Yet these myths still persist to this day. After watching this video, hopefully you can lend your voice to help put these myths behind us forever. Outdated myth number nine. Autism is a childhood condition. False. There are innumerable autistic adults, many of which you've probably heard of. Autism is how my brain is wired, it's not something I grow out of. This myth dates back to the 1940s when Leo Kanna first identified what he called early infantile autism, stating that these children have come into the world with an innate inability to form the usual biologically provided contact with people. Hmm, thanks Leo. I get the sense that a few of today's myths might trace back to this statement. This exclusive focus on children continued until the 1980s when Temple Grandin shocked the world by her very existence as an intelligent, speaking, autistic adult. Temple was diagnosed when she was four years old, she turned 75 this year, in 2022, and to my knowledge, she's still autistic. Don't worry, I'm sure it's just a phase, she's bound to grow out of it any time now. Outdated myth number eight. Autism can be caused and or cured. The real cause of autism is sex. That's right, sex. Specifically, sex between people with the right combination of genetic traits that results in the birth of an autistic or otherwise neurodivergent child. There have been numerous theories over the years of what causes autism, from bad parenting to vaccines or pathogens, all of which have been proven time and time again to be false. What we do know for sure is that hereditary factors are very important. In other words, autism runs in families. This means you can't cure autism any more than you can cure having brown eyes or being tall. You can mask these traits, and in fact, for many years, the goal of autism therapy was for children to be indistinguishable from their peers. But now we know that this is very damaging to a person's self-esteem. The reason that what we call early intervention is important is because my different brain wiring will likely mean that I need additional and or atypical support to help my development and prevent me from falling through the cracks of mainstream systems. Outdated myth number seven. Autism is a boy thing. Early research in the development of the autism diagnostic criteria focused heavily on boys in Western cultures, and as a consequence, female, non-binary, and culturally diverse traits are often missed, leading to chronic undiagnosis in these groups. Girls, for example, are often socialized very differently to boys, and so their presentations tend to be less loud and obvious. These days, girls are being diagnosed with increasing frequency, though it's still not a one-to-one -one with boys and they also typically get identified later. Even more subtle and difficult to detect is autism in high-masking women. It's common for there to be little to no easily observable outward signs, the kind of thing we look for in diagnostic criteria, but upon closer examination, especially including childhood experiences, many women can clearly tick all the boxes. If you discover you're autistic later in life, realizing you're not alone and meeting other autistic adults can be an extremely liberating experience. Outdated myth number six, we all have savant skills. The stereotype that we're all math geniuses most likely comes from Rain Man, but also recently from the push from IT companies to leverage autistic talent. Yes, many of us are gifted at IT and maths, but most of us are not. Many autistic people are extremely creative and will express themselves in the arts instead, where we're less likely to be perceived as savant and more likely to get labels like quirky or eccentric. It is true that we tend to have an uneven skill set distribution, being particularly good at some things and abysmally poor at others. However, this could be better described as very mild superpowers. 
I can take a power nap in the middle of a dance party, but I also don't like shopping centers due to the background noise and blinking lights. Outdated myth number five, autistic people aren't social. This one comes in many different guises. We don't get jokes, we don't want friends, we prefer to be alone. Some people are surprised that we can speak at all. Oh, sorry about that, let me just apologize for my very existence and go back to rocking in the corner. I know people who were told they can't be autistic because they want friends. But when you get a bunch of autistic people together, we are incredibly social, just not in a typical way. We connect deeply, we take alone time, we share interests, we make an effort to accommodate each other. You can learn a lot about autism by watching how we socialize with each other. I had one man in one of my social groups say, this is really weird. Normally I take cues from what to do by watching other people and just copying them. But here it's like there is no right way to be or to act. They really want me to be myself. Who am I when I don't need to conform to neuronormative social standards? Outdated myth number four, autistic people don't make eye contact. Again, completely false. There are some of us who don't make eye contact, others who give you too much, still others who have learned to mask so well that you don't even notice. What is common is that it doesn't feel natural. So we only really do it because we have to, inevitably giving too much or not enough. There are lots of reasons why we may not like eye contact. I did an entire video on that here. Outdated myth number three, we're all a little bit autistic. No, we are not all on the spectrum somewhere. That's an unhelpful statement on many levels. You might as well say we're all a little bit clinically depressed because we all get sad sometimes. No, not helpful, actually quite invalidating. A social disability becomes a disability when you're far enough outside the normal range to be a problem. For example, some people are physically shorter than others, but beyond a certain point, being too short starts to become a serious problem because most things we design in this world assume a standard range of adult heights. I also did a full video on this one that you can see here. Outdated myth number two, you don't look autistic. One word, masking, passing, camouflaging. Okay, that was three words, but you get the point. Some of us are very good at not looking autistic, i.e. blending in so you can't see our difference. Autism is a differently wired brain. So if we do the appropriate things on the outside, you can't tell that we have a different neurology on the inside. Now, importantly, not all of us can hide our difference. Some people do look autistic, weird, different, obviously abnormal in some way. And this is the basis for a great deal of stigma and discrimination leading to ostracism and social isolation. Being able to mask, being able to pass for normal is a huge privilege that many in our community don't have. That said, masking is a big problem for autistic mental health. It's incredibly important for us to have safe spaces where we can be authentically ourselves without having to mask, where we can look autistic, act autistic, i.e. different, and still be accepted. Finally, the number one outdated autism myth, autistic people lack empathy. Now, there actually is a name for people who don't feel empathy. We call them sociopaths. You may have seen some movies about them involving cold-blooded murder. Really? That's seriously what you're comparing me to? Not cool. The reality is that autistic people are just as likely to be overly empathic as to have difficulty picking up on the emotions of others. If you are an empath, then social situations can be really draining. Plus, the confusing thing is that socially we ignore most of our emotions most of the time. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Clearly not fine, but thanks for not asking. My social reactions may be different to yours. I may be awkward and not know what to do or what's considered socially appropriate. It does not mean I lack empathy. It means I am forever misunderstood. There's also a name for this. It's called the double empathy problem, and I recommend that you look it up if you're not familiar with it already. So there we have it, nine of the most pervasive outdated myths about autism that we, the autistic community, have to deal with every day. Not fun. You can help us by sharing this video and lending your voice to dispel these outdated and harmful myths and stereotypes. Or better yet, you can actively seek out and amplify other autistic voices. 
As I always say, if you want to understand autism, meet autistic people. You don't need to look far, we're in your community waiting to be included. But remember, don't force me to fit in, include me while I'm different. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.